Mark, how are you? Ariel, how are you doing? I'm doing great. It's great to have you on, as always, Mark. Okay, so uh, you know why you're on. Uh, it, it's it's a very hot topic, if not the hottest topic in the sport right now, what transpired on Saturday. I don't necessarily have to set it up because we've been talking about it at length at, at different points. So you were there. You watched it. Let me ask you, as you're watching that scene unfold, the 53 seconds, what are you seeing? What are you thinking? You're outside, right? You're, you're the, the, the ringside uh, referee. What are, you, what are you seeing there? Yeah, I'm sat, um, I'm sat in the commission seat. So, you know, uh, front and center. Uh, I'm actually sat there watching it, and, and I'm close to the monitor too. So I'm actually watching on the monitor as well. And uh, in the first minute, uh, sorry, uh, in the last minute of the last round, I see Merab go for, the, uh, for that takedown. Um, and then, obviously, at that point, you know, video replays, et cetera, are, are a, a luxury. I wasn't convinced on, on his state of play at that point. I, I couldn't actually tell because, you know, I'm in and out of the fight. But then when it got to the last, uh, you know, obviously the crowd started to hide. I'm looking a bit closer and I'm, I'm thinking, is he out? Is he out? You know, I'm watching his, I'm watching his movements, etc. I can see him um, doing the bicycle, which was, it was confusing me as well because I wasn't understanding why he was doing that. But at that point, I was still, I was still in two minds. You know, I was as close as anybody but I was not as close as the referee. Um, then, obviously, as the uh, as the fight ended, when the bell went and the referee separated, I'm still looking, thinking, "Hey, you know, I'm, what's got? Is he out? Is he out?" Because he was doing that bicycle, but the, the second that the referee stepped in, um, I didn't see him uh, move or attempt to get up. Which is not, you know, that, that, that's semantics. It's not unnatural to do that, considering the. The, the fight ending scenario that's just taken place, but then here's the this is the point this is the point that everybody missed this is the okay. point that everybody doesn't get, and I'm not new to that as a referee. Liam, I see Liam walk off and then come back and then out of camera shot, he actually I saw him wave the fight off, so I'm like oh god he's waved the fight off. And I'm thinking at that point, I, I was convinced, I was actually convinced as well, without any replays, watching it live for the first time, I was semi-convinced in my mind that, that, that Murad was out. Then when I saw Liam do that, this is what started the confusion. Because then uh, uh, Bruce came round to, um, uh, to the commission desk looking for the scorecards. And I heard him say, scorecards, scorecards. That's when you see my involvement. That's when you'll see me stand up and say, Bruce, what are you doing? The referee called the fight off. And at that point, Ariel, this is the most important part, that the referee, Liam, uh, Liam Kerrigan, he hadn't spoken to anybody. He hadn't approached the uh, commission desk. He hadn't spoken to me. He hadn't spoken to Nick Lembo. My involvement and why I stood up and said to Bruce, I went, Bruce, what are you doing? You can't go to the scores. The referee waved the fight off. He was out. He's lost the fight. And that's when it all started to unravel. And that's what people saw. People that, and like I said, I'm no stranger to people incorrectly fingering me and putting referees in the wrong position. They think I'm jumping up just to, uh, to remonstrate and demonstrate that the fighter was out. No, incorrect, categorically untrue. My first involvement, the first reason I stand up to go to Bruce is because I hear him say, scorecards, scorecards. I'm going, Bruce, Bruce, check with Liam. He waved off the fight. Could you tell Back. us, okay, and I appreciate that explanation. Could you tell us why he waved off the fight? Because it seemed like Mirab had survived. He had not tapped. And it seemed like he was moving around after the horn sounded. So why did he wave it off? Because he was convinced at the time. And look, me give you this okay <laughs> having obviously now within the cold light of day uh, and watching it back and i spoke at length after the fight i went back to speak to uh, uh to to ray longo first of all you know ray's a great guy i like him a lot very passionate guy very considerate very caring trainer and i was talking to him outside the dressing room and i was saying to him then i was i was still totally convinced i said ray he was out he was out look let, let me put it to you this way Let's put, and I'll tell you this from the heart, okay? I'm paid to be impartial. 
I have no allegiance to, to Ricky. I have no allegiance to Merad. As a referee, we're to be down the line and do and act upon what we see when we see it. So let's pretend, let's play another scenario. I'm not even there. Video that came out. I'm telling you personally for me, watching the end of that fight, and, and here's the point. People are talking about after the bell. Stop using the word after the bell. The pertinent point here is on the bell. What was the reaction on the bell? And on the bell, I believe that Liam Kerrigan had the correct call and that Merad was out. And here's the point. Merad doesn't know because that's what happens. That's what happens in jiu-jitsu. You know, Mos I've been around this sport forever, Ariel. I'm not the be-all and end-all. I've, <laughs> I've been in MMA for 18 years. Martial arts, much longer still. Fought, competed, wrestled, jiu-jitsu, jiu -jitsu black belt myself. Been a referee for 15 years. I'm telling you now, honestly, from the heart and from an impartial point of view, if somebody sent me that video and I wasn't even at the event and I'm watching it, I'm still going to determine every day of the week and twice on a Sunday on that bell when the referee stepped in, Merrod was out and the correct call was made. So you uh, just and to I be stand clear, by that. And I don't have to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So two two days later, a little less than two days later, you believe the the right call was made. You have not changed your opinion on on the matter. One hundred percent. Okay. Did you see that point where Ricky says to him, like, he was out, he was out, and then and then Marab gets up and he's like, no, 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 I'm not out. Of course, he had just been through something rather traumatic, 53 seconds, holding his breath. Doesn't it seem like he survived it, though, cool. to you? He's moving his legs. I mean, there, there's he's never limp. Now, he is. Look, <laughs> let's go back again and watch that video, all right? Yeah. And yeah. here's the point. This is me, the, the OCD mind watching. When when the, when the, the 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 last minute was initiated, when Murad went in for that takedown, he actually almost spiked himself, did yeah. he himself to the top of the head? Okay. Yeah. He didn't roll over. Watch the video again. People don't believe to see what you think you saw. Let's see what actually happened. You'll see Ricky Simone use an elevator, puts one hand, uh, sorry, uh, top of his foot inside the leg, sweeps him over flat on his back. At that point, he's mounted with a with a mounted guillotine. You'll see Merad's hands go flat to the mat. I believe now, watching uh, the video, he's actually out at that point. That's what I believe. And what I said to um, uh, the referee is, if I was refing that fight, I'm stopping that fight before it gets to the bell. And okay. I understand, look, nothing but my complete and utter admiration and, re and respect for Merad. You know, the fight was amazing. You know, he's, he's in, I'm not pouring any detriment onto him. I'm not saying he's telling any untruth because he's not. The guy's the definition of a, of, of, of a fighter. They both were. It takes two to tango to get fight of the night. Both of them left their heart and soul in there. And my heart goes out to him wholly and completely. But by the true sense of the word, you know, the referees have to deal with what actually happened. And I believe, like I said, going back and looking at that video and stop focusing on the word after. Okay. Yep. After. So the word we're looking for is on. It's the reaction and state of that fighter at the moment the fight is stopped on the bell. And if you go back and look at, forget the bicycling as well. I'm telling you, from my experience, he's doing that as an involuntary motion. He doesn't even know what he's doing. I'm t and that's why. You know, the guy is convinced that, that, you know, that he won because he, he poured it all out there. He left his heart and soul, uh, you know, in, in the middle of that octagon. And I have nothing but, for you know, respect for him. He wasn't aware of the position he was in because it started. The beginning of the end was when he had that compression, hit, hit himself in the top of the head. Uh, and, and the Gillard team was on from there on in for, for the last 54 seconds. Uh, let me ask you, it, it was ruled as a TKO due to technical submission. Um, that's what Nick Lembo said it was, uh, what, 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 what the ruling should be. That's what it was announced as. Um, Big John McCarthy, who you know, has has taken issue with this. He even tweeted me saying, how could this be? You can't have a TKO via technical submission. Is that the, I mean, that's kind of semantics at this point. If you believe the right guy won, the right guy won. But can you explain why it's being ruled as a TKO via technical submission? Like you've said, at this point, to me, that's immaterial, semantics. That's the way New Jersey do things, whether it's a particular quirk, the way they do things. 
Let's talk about that another day. Why? Why? And, and but that agree. leads. But but wait. But actually, that leads to the confusion here. TKO via technical submission is is a very unique okay. ruling. All right, I agree with you. And if and if you watched even before I'd, I'd I'd only actually spoke to John McCarthy this morning. Me and John spoke on the phone this morning when I I landed back in in the UK. Okay. Uh, I know that he had expressed him. I know that he'd expressed himself on, on Twitter in, in various forms. I don't know this. Obviously, I'm in the arena. Um, and lo and behold, the funny thing is, me and him, like 99% of the time we do, we come together and we agree. I, I do agree with him. I think the wording, that's something for New Jersey to look at. Obviously, the wording that they use, why they decided to call it TKO, I'm not sure. But if you okay. saw me on the the little news segment with Fox Sports, after the, after the fight, I said, you know, by comparison, the correct fashion is he was submitted albeit technically. He just didn't know it. And that's what happens with fighters in that position. You wake up. I've been to sleep more times than you've had hot dinners. That's what happens when you wake up. You don't know. And here's another very important point. Merad, you know, God bless him. When the doctor came in and the doctor went to him, the first thing he said to the doctor was, what happened? And that's mm. a classic 101. Mm. Of being, and, and don't blame the guy because it was such a a frantic finish to the fight. It was it was high paced. He was he was in a, a ridiculously tight spot. And when you're in that position, you don't know what's going on. And he showed all the signs of not knowing what's going on. Uh, Nick Lembo said to me afterwards that you can't be saved by the bell. But isn't that false? Like what you know, I, I've seen many occasions where someone is actually saved by the bell, where there's a deep choke and like Mayhem Miller, Jake Shields, you're saved by the bell. Can you? I mean, you can actually be saved by the bell, can't you? I think we may have lost him. Oh, Mark, you there? I'm still here, but that, I lost you there for a second. I was told afterwards you can't be saved by the bell. That was that was part of the explanation that I received as to why the ruling was what it was. But isn't that incorrect? Can't I mean if you're in the midst of a choke and you don't tap, isn't that in essence being saved by the bell? Doesn't that happen all the time? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And oh, look, and that's not in question. Let's deal with the facts here. He, okay. He, he, clearly, he didn't tap. That's not what. We're, that's not what we're discussing. He was nowhere close to tapping. Yeah. That's not the discussion here. And I think the term "saved by" again, it's just semantics at this point. But things get clouded, etc. Saved by the bell. What we're focusing on here, what he actually means by that, is the condition of the fighter on the bell. That's why I was being emphatic on the word people are saying but what did you do after after is completely and utterly in this instance immaterial the word we focus on is on what happens on the bell if you are deemed as not being with it i.e. unconscious on the bell that's why the determination is made and like I said as a referee look I am Mr. Impartial I don't here's the thing I can't stand this word um, robbery I really have a, it's a, such a strong word and I can't stand it. And especially in um, in an instance such as this, but it's a two-way thing in this instance. Let's play it out the other way. Let's say that the referee hadn't determined that, that Merad had actually been out and that it went to the scorecards and he did get the win. Does the word robbery, would that not apply equally for Ricky? Because he was convinced that he was out, you know? It's a two-way thing here. It's a two-way thing. But going back to that term on the bell, saved by the bell, what he means is, is the, the, the condition of the fighter on the bell, not what's happened after. Okay. Like I said, I don't, have, I don't have to say this, but I wholeheartedly agree. Go speak to Liam. Liam's the guy. He's the referee. That Where is Liam? You're the one putting your, your reputation out there. Where is Liam? How come Liam's not talking? I've got no idea. I've got no idea. And I, Ariel, here's the thing. I yeah. will make people will talk to uh, people will say about I oh, Mark wants to do this, Mark wants to do that. You know, let me how can I put this? I don't give a fuck what you think or what they not you, I mean metaphorically, yes, yes, yes. what they sure. think or what they say. If I'm at an event, you look my children aside, mixed martial arts is a, is such a pivotal part of my life. I've devoted a huge part of my life to this sport, okay? To say I'm passionate about this game is a huge understatement. And when I'm involved in any capacity, 
at an event, whether I'm the referee or outside, all I want is the right thing and the right determination to happen. And the sequence of events was this. The fight was stopped. <coughs> I'm still looking at that point because I'm, I'm unclear as to what the referee uh, uh, determination was. Then I see him wave the fight off. At that point, at that point, that referee has made the determination. He's out. Then when Bruce come and asked for the scorecards, that's when the whole thing started to unravel. And it, if it went to the scorecards at that point, after the determination of the ref, it would have been wrong. Wholly wrong. In, in a case like this, if it becomes like a, almost like a he said, he said situation, you guys say he's out. He says he's not out. There's no clear cut determination. You know, he moved like seconds after. Why do you side with him being out as opposed to, hey, the guy survived? i tell you why I side with him being out, Ariel. And I'm sorry if I've repeated this. Let's go back and look at that video, okay? And there's a notion in MMA, you know, like I said, when I was talking to uh, uh, Ray Longo in the back, you know, I love that guy. I love that guy's passion. I have a, a ton of respect for him. And I said to him immediately, I said to him to his face, I said, Ray, I'm telling you, go back and watch the video. He was out. And then uh, Chris Weidman uh, approached as well. Again, you know, Chris, great guy, full of respect. And I said the same thing to him, that the, the important point I was getting across to them was on the ruling side of it. That's where the confusion was. Yeah. Because obviously the, the terminology they'd use with TK, et cetera, et cetera. What I wanted, because that's what I do. I'm, I can't, I'll, I will make no excuses and I'll never make an excuse for being the guy that wants to be involved because that's what I do. I can't, you know, I just want the right thing. And anyone who knows me from stretching back from my time began, I've been refereeing for almost 15 years, 14 and a half years now. I've always been the same. I, I just want the right thing, to, you know, yeah, to yeah. be done. No, I, I, and if I, there's a, a, a procedure there. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. I, I interrupted you. Please. Sorry. Yeah. You know, so, so I was talking to, and, and I'd explained to him, I'd already gave my opinion. And let's go back to the video. Like I said, let's say I'm not at that event. And the first I hear about this is when they show me that video that everybody else saw when he finishes in, 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 in the mounted guillotine, the referee says stop and he gets up. And you'll see he's still kicking his left leg in an involuntary fashion. He's out. He is out. And I will bet my ass to a barn door every day of the week, twice on a Sunday, and I would testify everywhere else. He's <laughs> out. It's as clear as day. Well, well, one last thing about this, Mark. Could I ask you, you've seen fights where a guy gets like a flash knockout and, and, and the opponent is out for a second. I remember this happened with Fedor and Dan Henderson. This happened many times before, but then he actually wakes up from another punch. You could go back and say that guy was out, but then he somehow survives in the midst of it all. Isn't this the same thing? You're out for a second and then you, 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 you wake up some way, somehow. Isn't that the same thing? I'm really sorry. Oh, did I lose you? Did you not hear that? I, did, I heard you say a fighter gets knocked down or blah, 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 and yeah. he comes back. Dead. We've, I've uh, seen knockouts. Uh, I, I'm sure you've seen situations where a guy gets, he, he, upon further review, he was out in the middle of a fight, but somehow after extra punches, he wakes up. This happened with Fedor and Dan Henderson. It's happened many times before. Isn't that the same thing? You can be out. The referee may miss it, but in the end, you survived. So isn't it, you know, how 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 your state is at the end of the fight? You could be out in the midst of a fight. It's missed. It's You get flash knockout. You're done. But then you somehow wake up in the midst. Isn't that the exact same thing that happened here? He was out after the stinger, after he DDT'd himself. But in the end, it seemed like he was awake once the fight was yeah. over. Isn't that the same thing? Yeah, but Ariel... When the fight was over, you think he was out for the third time. I'm going to <laughs> of course. Okay. All right. Of fair course. enough. All right. Come fair on, enough. man. I, I defer Come to on. you. I, I, I let me, let yeah. Look. Okay. Look, what's your opinion? And look, like I said, yeah. I have no, look, nothing, but I spoke to Murad afterwards, whether he remembers or not. I saw him back in the house. I have nothing yeah. but admiration and respect for that guy. And I have nothing. And I, it takes two to tango. They got fight of the night, which 
hopefully soften the blow for him. You know, I understand that, you know, the my empathy for him and, and obviously, you know, the emotion and everything involved in, in, in MMA in a fight, I understand. I get it all. I've been there on both sides and I really do understand. But I've got to say it again, and I don't have to because I've n- I've never met Liam Kerrigan before in my life. It was the first time I've met him. Do I believe he made the correct determination at the moment that fight was stopped? Yes, I do. Okay, fair enough. You know, I'll defer to you. You guys are the experts. You did ask for my opinion. My opinion is that at the end of the fight, it seems like we have a very tired man who is laying on the mat, who responds right away when Simone says, you're out, and he goes, no, I'm not out, and it seems as though there are doctors who are telling him to lie down. It also seems like we have a man who probably doesn't, you know, understand exactly what's going on. We're, we're looking at the finishing sequence here. To me, watching it live, I thought 100%. We have just seen one of the gutsiest performances in the history of the UFC. A man has survived a 53-second choke, and he's good to go, and he just won via decision. Because I'm watching it, it looks like he is still, you know, he moves his head right there. We're looking at it. Simone is pointing at him, and he goes, no, I'm not out. That's what I saw. But again, I'll defer to you guys. You're 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 the experts. I'm not. I'd even I'd even weigh in on it on Twitter because I, I feel like there's a knee jerk reaction at times. I'm not a licensed ref. I'm not a judge. You go to my Twitter timeline. I did not criticize because I feel like sometimes we are too quick to judge you guys. So I respect you coming on and talking about this. Can I ask you one last thing, Mark, before I let you go? Because uh, you know I've I've wanted to have you on the show for quite some time. What, what I mean, you were involved in a, in a, in a, in, a, in a pretty famous moment now in, in the sport with with Conor McGregor. What could you tell us about the state of your relationship with Conor and what happened that night in Dublin? Um, I would ref Conor McGregor tonight in five minutes in the next hour with the exact same integrity and professional impartiality that's got me to where it's got me to today. No question. Has there been made? Has there any effort been made to try to rectify whatever issue he may have with you? Has anyone tried to mediate, you know, between you and him? No, no, not at all. And I'm not the kind of guy to to to, to bear a grudge. You know, I'm in this sport as a professional, Ariel, and uh, some nights you earn your money uh, a little bit more involved than 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 other nights. And you know that was certainly um, that was certainly a night I felt I earned my money, uh, and you know I didn't knee jerk. I slept on that for for a couple of days, and I had a uh, I said my piece publicly. It yeah. was very very majorly well received, as you know. Uh, yeah. And 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 my thought process and, and 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 my feelings don't change. Like I said, you know what's done is done, and I would rest Connor tonight tomorrow. Just as Mark Goddard, the ref, the, the, the same ref that he's always knew all, 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 you know, all this time, it's 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 no skin off me, a hundred percent. You know, sometimes, like I said, as a ref, we've had this discussion. You're damned if you do, damned if you don't. You know, like I said, going back about the family thing without getting too tied in, too emotional. Sometimes, you know, you know, as a referee, we, we can make a living, but it's not. We're not millionaires by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, sometimes a little bit tough. Off, you know, um, you have to develop a, a, a thick skin, um, and uh, you're put in tight spots every now and again, and it's part and parcel of the sport. Was Suck that, up, man. yeah, was that the toughest night of your career? Um, I've had tougher nights. I'll tell you the story about me in uh, Vietnam one day, that was much <laughs> tougher. Okay, fair enough, but you don't hold a grudge, it's all good on your end, never. Never. I don't hold grudges, mate. There's too much weight. Never, ever, ever. Well done, Mark. Thank you very much for coming on and explaining, um, you know, your side. And, 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 and in our opinion, it holds a lot more weight than, than our side. That's why we like to get, you know, the newsmakers. I would say to Liam, and, and I think that this is something that needs to be done in the sport more often. I love the fact that you went on FS1 afterwards. I think that more often than not, there is this tendency with commissioners and referees and judges to just hide and I do feel like, okay, you don't have to do a million interviews, but to put out a statement, look, I, I, I am critical of Mario Yamasaki, um, but I'll say this about Yamasaki. He comes out and he actually puts out a statement. He explains his actions. There are a lot of referees, I don't have to name names, who just hide and we don't hear from them. And I think it takes a big man to come out and explain your side. So I appreciate you coming on and wanting to talk and, and at least explain your side of things because I, I, I think people need to hear it. And I think it holds a lot more weight than some of the people that you see on Twitter weighing in who have never refed or judged, don't have a license, things like that.
I appreciate the, the time and the platform to be able to do so. I really do. Okay. Thank you, Mark. We'll talk to you soon. All the best to you. Cheers, Ariel. See you soon, mate.